Yes. So yeah, next part we'll do is math with tensors. Um, I'm debating if we we're going to do a solving linear algebra. I might keep that for next time just because it might make more time. Um, so this is when we actually start doing stuff with the NumPy tensors. So obviously I have NumPy itself. Um, there's a whole bunch of things uh, called broadcasting. Um, this is something that um, can be really tricky, so be very careful with it. Um, I would say read the documentation and understand it, but honestly, a lot of it too is um, if you're not careful, you might accidentally broadcast something that you didn't mean to. So just kind of be aware of this in the background. Be um, very careful with how you're doing the math. So here I'm just going to define my um, two, in this case, I'm going to do uh, two matrices. So you can see here's my matrix A, matrix B, okay? I just made it real quickly. And note that I can just do this 10 times right here. So note that I just did 10 times and it multiplied each element by 10. 0 times 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 10, and so on. Okay. Um, this is what I'm talking about broadcasting. Basically, this number right here is basically broadcasted over to each part. And NumPy is pretty smart and will try to broadcast if it can. Uh, which of course can actually put you in more trouble if you're not careful. You can broadcast something that you didn't think was going to be broadcasted. Okay, so next part is addition. Addition is pretty simple. Okay, um, again, we're just going to get those same um, those same um, matrices. Okay, just like before. Okay, and I'm going to add them together. So we're basically when we add matrices together, it'll add it element by element. So zero plus zero, one plus ten, two plus twenty, and so on. Okay, so. Oh, I'm sorry, I had it for, I had a larger matrix. So you can see, same idea though. And I just multiply it by 10. So again, zero by zero, one plus 10, two plus 20, and so on. You can see we get that number. And it's pretty obvious up until like 10. 10 might be a little more harder to see, but you see the ideas there, okay? Um, so this is where broadcasting comes into play. So with a regular element, if they have the same number of elements for each matrix, it just adds each element one about the left, you know, the very first element, the second element, the third element, and so on. Um, we can do broadcasting. NumPy is really smart. It says, hey, you're adding 10, which is, a, which is supposed to be a scalar. But it's like, I think I get what you're saying. So NumPy says, all right, we're just going to add 100 to each element. So you can see here, originally was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We get 100, 101, 102, 103, and so on. Okay. So pretty straightforward for addition, right? Cool. Thumbs up. All right, awesome. So now this is when we start doing things like when I say broadcasting, it's like, oh, cool, like NumPy is really smart. Let's just have it do everything for us. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead, uh, let me split this so it's a little easier for us to see. Okay, so now I'm going to define this X, right? And I'm also going to define, let's print out A just to show you guys. So I have X right here, and I have um, A. And if I try doing it, it's like, hey, let's go ahead and add A plus X, okay? Um, first of all, it's like, well, it's not the right dimension, but we saw NumPy is pretty smart with broadcasting. So let's try to add this three by two. This isn't three by two. I don't know why I put three by two. It really should be five by three. If we add this together. Okay, won't, won't work, right? So if I do, however, I don't know why I did this before. Um, I must have made a mistake. But if I do this, if I go ahead and define A like I had with a three by two, let's do this. But now I can see, okay, now you can see this part. It's still not the same matrix, right? It's still not going to be the same dimension, but you can kind of get the idea. So if I added this part, you probably would expect zero plus 100, or sorry, zero, 100. Um, so you get a zero, 101, two, 103, and so on, right? And if you've done this now, you can actually, that's what we get. So basically NumPy tries to figure out like, hey, what's the best way for us to add these together? Like, will this make sense? And this is what the broadcasting is. Basically, it broadcasts this thing essentially to a matrix that's 0, 100, 0, 100, 0, 100, and just adds it up together. Okay? Um, but we saw if we don't have the right dimensions, it won't work. So again, we can kind of see something similar where, is this the same thing? Sorry, I got caught up in my own head. Yeah, that's the same. this is the same thing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So now we actually have, here, I'll print this out like this. We can see we have a new X matrix right here, which is basically just a matrix zero to 500. And then we can just add these together. So that makes sense. We just add up element by element. In this case for A, let's just print out A for a second. You can see that these are the same dimensions, same shape. So we can just add them together. So we do A plus X, they just get added together like normal, okay? 
And then as I saw before, if we tried doing, oh my gosh, I'm bad today, by three. Okay, so if I add a three by two to a three, two by three, so I made a lot of mistakes here. I don't know what I was doing before. So you notice that I have the same number of elements, but this time I'm gonna reshape it into a two by three. And I try adding this together, as you guys probably can kind of guess, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. And that's because it doesn't, uh, NumPy doesn't know how to broadcast in this direction. It will only broadcast in one direction. So you might think like, oh, maybe I could do like zero to 100 plus that on that column. NumPy is like, no, I can't do that. It tries to match the columns first. So again, broadcasting can get you, can be really useful, but also in a lot of ways uh, can be harmful if you're not careful. So just be aware of broadcasting and ways you can do it. Okay. Any questions on the concept of broadcasting? Um, you like that? Okay, just know broadcasting is actually pretty computationally efficient. So that way you don't have to create, if you had like a matrix, like a vector that's only this big, instead of making a new matrix that's like super big, which will take up a lot of space and memory, you can basically just broadcast across. That's one of the reasons why we do broadcasting is that you don't have to look at each individual, you don't have to create a whole new matrix. You can just use the small little vector and repeat that over. Okay, or obviously more general with tensors. Okay, so this brings us to multiplication. So again, we just saw addition. Again, subtraction is pretty simple um, in that sense. So multiplication, uh, we actually have a few ways you can multiply. So one is called the Hadamard product, um, which uh, will result in the same dimension after broadcasting. It's kind of it's kind of like how we do addition. Basically, it does element by element. So we can see here, for example, I have A and B. So you can see we have zero B. This isn't gonna work. Jeez, sorry guys. I def oh, that's probably what I did. I mixed these two up at one point. Okay, so let's do, there we go. I'm making it so it's the same sh uh, dimension. So, okay, so now we have the same dimension size. Okay, five by three, five by three. So if I multiply them together, it'll multiply each element zero by zero one times 10, two times 20, and so on. Okay, so you can see that last number is gonna be pretty big. Okay, make sense? So it just says each element by each element, okay? So that's useful and, and stuff. Um, you can also do broadcasting. So this isn't gonna work out the way I want it to because we already changed A. Again, I don't know what was wrong with me when I wrote this stuff. So I'm just redefining it now so it's a, uh, three by two. It's a lot to keep track of though, like. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, a lot of different numbers. I, I should have just made them different uh, values. So I must've jumped up and down. So again, something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so now we should have a three by two and a two, one by two. And now if we multiply these together, is that what I wanted to do? Yeah, okay. You can see now it broadcasts across just like before, zero to a hundred to each of these parts. Oh. Sorry, I skipped it. <laughs> zero time, uh, that A part gets multiplied zero times 100, zero times 100, um, all the way through. So if we printed out A originally, we would see that it's just this guy times 100, okay? okay. And again, um, if we have this big old guy, obviously it's gonna be added, or it's gonna be multiplied. See? I don't know what I was doing anymore. <laughs> it was too, I was too tired writing some of this, these lessons. Okay, but you can see here when I multiply them together, since they're the same size, they'll result in being multiplied fine. And of course, um, if I have the wrong dimension shape, you can see I have a two by three here, but our um, A matrix is a three by two. It won't work. So you can see here, it doesn't work out. Could not be broadcast together, a three by two and a two by three. Okay, so that's our first way of multiplying, the Hadamard product. And that's the one if you use just the regular uh, star, like you would multiply in like Python, um, that's the result you have. There's another way to multiply, which is the dot product, which is probably closer to what you've done if you ever did any linear algebra um, you know, in school. You probably have come across the dot product, not the Hadamard product. Um, so just know the defaults are different. So again, I'll define, hopefully this is what I wanted, my A, B, and C. Okay, good. Yeah, nervous for a second. Okay, so you can see my A value right here. If I print out my B value right here, you can see 
I have different shapes. So if I do like my A dot shape and my B dot shape, you can see I have a, I already printed this, a three by two and a five by three. Okay. I can actually multiply these together or, um, oh, sorry. I misspoke. I'm speaking ahead, guys. It's, it's been a long time, I guess. All right. So I have my A, B shape, my three by two and my five by three matrix. I also create a C matrix. So I have this guy right here, okay, three by five. So now I can actually do a dot product. So this A and this C should not work. This won't work. Sorry. Yeah. What I defined before. Ugh. See the joys of linear algebra and coding on the fly. Where was I, guys? <laughs> All right. Okay. So we want basically, I'm basically making the dimensions work out. So if we're going to do a dot C, we want it to be end with a three five. So I'm going to put a three times five dimension and reshape it to five comma three. Okay. This way. Um, and then if I go ahead and print out what A looks like, oops, you can see here, I now have this gorgeous matrix right here. And now I have this gorgeous matrix. I can actually go ahead and dot product these together and you'll see I've got a Z. So, and um, the way I was showing here is that these three ways, so all of these ways I wrote down here will perform the same exact thing. If I do NP dot AC, or a dot C or a at C, that's a new one, right? Um, these will all produce the same exact thing. They'll both do the dot product of a dot C, okay? And so you can see now, when I do the Z, we actually have a five by five. And remember that our original one was print a, that was our A, and then let's go ahead and do a print C. You can see that these are different matrices. So this case is a five by three, five uh, rows, three columns. And this is a three by five, three rows, five columns. Okay. And so we get a result of five for three. Basically what it comes down to is that if we have a shape that's something like a uh, three comma five, and this is a matrix of five comma three, basically this inside part has to match. Okay. So when we do an A dot C, basically it's going to say, all right, do the inside ones. Like if I imagine, multiplying these together, five comma three, you know, uh, dot three comma five, do these dimensions match up? And if they match up, dot product's happy, it'll put them together essentially. Um, again, I won't go into the details of like what dot product is. You're, you can look that up pretty easily um, online. and It'll show you exactly what's going on. Uh, if you think it back, like we did most matrix multiplication, that's what a dot product is. It's basically doing the row times column thing back in grade school. Um, but the main thing you have to really realize is when they work together is when these dimensions are matching up with each other okay, in the shape. And note that it didn't have to be five. This could have been seven, and this would result in a seven by five matrix um, if I define A that way. Okay, cool. Um, any questions on that guy? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. So, and then here's an X, for example, I define an X as a one by three matrix. Okay. Or sorry, a three by one matrix. So you can see the size is three. Okay. One. And then um, when I multiply a dot C, remember a, let's do a dot shape. You can see um, a was a five by three. So I do a times X, which is a three by one. It'll make a, um, five by one matrix. So five columns, one row. Okay. Note that there's no one right here because when we do a vector, we don't put down that's ex explicitly one essentially. Okay, cool. Um, any questions on dot product? Kind of went through it a little quickly on this. I might leave this one for later. Okay, cool. So last one we have for uh, multiplying is cross product and cross product, um, can be a little tricky. Um, just know that you can do an, uh, a cross product. Um, broadcasting can work again, just be kind of aware of it. Um, note that 
This, for example, is usually used for matrices, or not matrices, vectors. So we'll usually do a cross product of a vector times a vector. And it turns out, again, I'm kind of very quickly going through it, is that um, a matrix, which is remember like, kind of like a bunch of vectors, um, you can think of a matrix as defining a uh, space, basically a dimension, um, a vector space. So you can think of like, if you start cross producting all the, the vectors together. And again, very quickly, without going into full details of exactly what a cross product is, um, you can think of a cross product as basically trying to form like, um, the way I kind of imagine it is if I had like a vector, so you know like vectors like in space, like a vector's pointing this way, a vector's pointing this way, and you put them together, it's basically like the cross product is trying to find that um, two dimensional plane that they both span over, okay? So it's kind of like if I could somehow draw a sheet between these two vectors, that's what a cross product really is doing. Um, there's a really great uh, visualization um, YouTube, or there's a YouTube channel that does a lot of uh, mathematics called three blue, one brown. Um, he does a really great job. Good, I see Josh nodding. Uh, he actually has a whole section, like I would strongly suggest if you want to know like what exactly is going with linear algebra, he does a great job visualizing a bunch of things, but one, he has a whole thing about linear algebra. And he talks about like, Things like even like called the determinant and like um, basically showing this this vector space and describing this and I think it does a really great job of explaining this visually, which he has amazing animations. Um, I wish I could draw, I mean, not draw, but like uh, he does a great job of making sure the animations are accurate and honestly, it's kind of fun to watch. So highly recommend him checking it out uh, if he wants to know more about more of this linear algebra stuff. Now. I didn't talk about manipulating matrices and identity matrix. Um, so I think I'm gonna save that for next time if you guys are cool with that, just cause we're a little low on time. Um, but that will also lead us into solving with linear algebra. Okay, cool. Sound good to you guys? Okay. Good. Definitely you guys have any? Review. Oh. Review, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, lot of linear algebra stuff um, and it's gonna be, can be something you, a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms rely on linear algebra. Um, understanding linear algebra will also help you be able to know how to process the data. Basically, all data we'll find out is essentially linear algebra, or we'll be using linear algebra to parse through our data um, when we do visualizations. So, definitely important part that I just went through very quickly, which the curriculum has a lot more examples that you can go into. Okay.